recruitment artist for EU Sandbox 2, and I'm the product owner for the distribution centers. Before we delve into, oh, I'll put my slide on for a start. Um, before we delve into it, everything that you're going to see is currently in gray box, so just keep that in mind. So, these distribution centers, what are they? Well, first off, they're the biggest location we have on the ground outside of landing zones. The reason why they're so big is intentional. We wanted them to accommodate as much world and mission-based gameplay as possible. Each location supports multiple landing pads and hangars, making them accessible to as many players as possible at any one time. There's even a road network to support transit from the planet's surface, yeah, into the main building and to any berth ships. So every distribution center will be owned by a faction. You know, depending on the faction and where the distribution center is located on the planet will determine its specialism. Now, each specialism will lend itself to different missions and gameplay opportunities. So let's talk about some factions for a moment. So an example of a major faction would be the UEE. Now at their distribution centers, they're likely to be more specialized towards military supply, research and development, or communications, you know, depending on which branch of the UEE it is. They will have a much stronger military presence in the area. And missions here may be more hostile with combat-orientated, team-based raid opportunities. Other examples of hostile gameplay that we're thinking of is hacking and stealing, searching for and destroying a specific item, tracking and eliminating any VIPs, and, you know, everyone's favorite, eliminate all. Grey Cat Industrial would be an example of a minor faction. So their distribution centers will be more specialized towards gathering resources, manufacturing, assembly, shipping. There would be a security presence here, but it won't be that as strong as a major faction. And missions here would be more suited to friendly gameplay loops, though we won't be ruling out hostile missions like corporate espionage. Uh, yeah, some other friendly gameplay types. Uh, cargo hauling, like I said, resource gathering and mining, maintenance of the location. But you know, that's enough of me talking about it. How about we show you where we're up to with these distribution centers?
Thank you. So to talk you through the corporate spaces at these locations, please welcome Rainer Rick to the stage. Hello, hello. So my name is Rainer Rick. I'm a lead environment uh, artist at the Montreal Studio. And we've been working with John's team on the distribution centers. So John just showed how massive these locations are. He also presented the industrial sections on the ground level. And I'm here to present the administrative area of these facilities that the Montreal team has been working on. So they're located above ground, just below the tower highlighted in the picture. Inside, you'll be able to explore the corporate office space and interact with the administrative personnel. Accessible via the lifts and the hangars, and also the industrial sections we saw earlier. In addition, we've added also landing pads in front of the lobby, specifically designed for smaller ships and ideal for short stays like pickup or delivery missions. And we can't ignore the fantastic views we have from these platforms. A reminder of the vastness of these facilities. Now, let's step inside the lobby. You'll find the atrium, which is a central point of the administrative area, providing access to various locations of the corporate space. Within this space, you'll find the reception desk. And as a newcomer, you'll be expected to report here first. So here you can hand over your deliveries or pick up packages and earn reputation points with that faction. So also expect to see corporate ownership reflected through branding, color schemes, and product placement throughout the corporate hub. And with the use of overlays, we'll be able to swap these out depending on the ownership. And here's an example with Greycat showcasing their vehicles and some shiny armor. And back on the topic of reputation, as it grows, you can expect to gain access to the executive office spaces. From here, you'll meet with unique quest givers. And depending on your reputation level, you'll receive ver various mission types, either friendly or hostile. And finally, uh, the distribution centers were designed as an evolving location. We've built this with future expansion in mind. And in the back of the lobby, for example, doorways could eventually lead to additional office space. So enough talk. Uh, just before I show the, our progress so far, I want to give a big thank you to the Montreal team for their work on the administration of area. <laughs> thank you. And as John mentioned, we're still in gray box phase, so just keep that in mind. But let's take a look.
Thank you very much. And now let me welcome back John on stage. He's going to continue the presentation. Thanks a lot, guys. Team did a great job with that video. OK, so something we've been working on that's unique to this location is raids. Click on. So raids are team-based missions with a focus on high-risk, high-reward operations. As Carl mentioned previously, you'll be able to choose how you gain entry to these locations. Coming prepared and geared up will make the difference between success and failure. Ultimately, you'll need to work together in order to succeed. So these raids will have you breaching the interior of the main structure, highlighted here. Now, each interior will comprise of rooms that reflect the location's specialism. For example, a shipping focus distribution center will have rooms dedicated to the storage of cargo. Looking to the future, we're planning on having distribution centers with subterranean levels that will be accessed from this interior space. These will expand upon and increase the difficulty of these raids. Now let's take a look at one of these raid missions in action, but please note that this is early gameplay uh, prototype of a raid. So, as you saw in the video, the team took a more aggressive approach to getting inside and taking what they wanted. But this isn't the only approach you can use. You know, multiple points of egress allow you to be stealthier, and it may make it easier for you to avoid obstacles in your path. Now, reputation will also tie into these raids. Missions will have varying objectives depending on the player's reputation level and dynamic events may also be triggered during the raid, so players will need to adapt to an evolving situation. This could range from dealing with additional security personnel to other players arriving to defend the, the location against you. Something else we've been prototyping is how we can utilize the multi-tool to create gameplay puzzles. Physically interacting with the environment around you changes the puzzles for everybody. With multiple add-ons for the tool available, you may have to get creative when finding a solution to the problem in front of you. In this next video, we show you how using the track to be an attachment can open up new paths to your objective, but it's up to you to decide what path you can create with what is available. Let's watch the video.
So, yes, thank you. Now, obviously, it was, um, you know, this location would be possible with several people at CIG, so my thanks go to Manuel, John, Jack, Martin, Farouk, Luke, Chris, Mustafa, Sam, Tom, and Rob, you've been excellent. Thank you to Rainer and his team in Montreal. You know, none of this would be possible without their efforts. And yeah, thanks to everybody here and online watching. Really appreciate your support. On to the next one. Hello. This is a good segue from the uh, distribution centers, as I'll be talking to you about different aspects of cargo and freight on behalf of Art and Design. Yeah. My name is Nick Etheridge, and I'm an Assistant Environment Art Director. So obviously, cargo isn't just about boxes. It's a big part of the game. Almost every aspect of the game has some kind of involvement with cargo and I'm going to briefly go through some of them now. So let's start with missions. How will hauling contracts work in-game? We'll be introducing the Interstellar Transport Guild, as well as, form as, well as formalizing some of the main hauling and cargo companies that you'll be working with. As you do more hauling contracts, you will build up your reputation and relationship with the guild. This will lead you to gaining more lucrative contracts for specialized cargo and destinations, such as different forms of hazardous cargo, perishable cargo, riskier routes, and, and more. So what do I mean by hazardous and perishable? Well, as you know, there's lots of commodities in the game, and different commodities have different properties. As you know, with events like Xenothreat, we have some special cargo types with different attributes such as time-sensitive cargo or quantum-sensitive cargo. But those were a small selection for the event, and they were the two-handed carryable types anyway. We'll be expanding those types, plus lots more types, to the wider game and to these hauling contracts. So how does this affect gameplay? It will affect the choices you make when you are handling, storing, and traveling with the cargo. For example, with size and weight, is it carryable? Do you need a tractor beam? What type of tractor beam do you need? Is it a handheld one or a ship tractor beam? Some containers can only be moved with ship tractor beams, for example. With health, has the container got good integrity? Is it holding fragile goods? Do you need to handle it with care? You can't just throw all containers about. For temperature control, do you need to ensure the container is powered so it can keep the contents cool? Or do you need to get to your destination quickly, um, otherwise the contents may perish? For security, can the container be locked or hacked? Can the contents be scanned or is the container tracked? Will there be pirates or law after you when you're holding this container? Has a containment? Is it radioactive? You might need the right uh, protection against it, as you may have seen in Jens's presentation earlier. Can it explode? You might not want to put these containers on a more exposed section of your ship. And many of these attributes are, are going to be visually distinctive. So conversely, if you want to steal, for example, some cargo on a hull C, which does have very exposed cargo containers, you might want to avoid shooting blindly and accidentally blowing up your potential profits. So look out for those types of containers. Back to mission progression. We'll be introducing perks and rewards as part of fulfilling contracts and raising reputation with these companies. For rewards, we'll have branded ship and tool skins, branded clothing. There will be collectibles to decorate your hab hangar or ship, or you can put them anywhere you want. And there'll be more exclu exclusive rewards that we'll be revealing later. For <laughs> Thank you. For perks, you'll get access to more items in shops, 
and discounts on specific items. And all of these reward